talking NASCAR. We're talking F1 here on Mystery Caution. You can also catch us on Prime Sports Network. And so, yes, we have uh, two YouTube channels. The, the uh, primary uh, uh, channel, of course, is Prime Sports Network. Uh, but you can check us out for our 100% motorsports channel. And we will be talking... Uh, on Saturday this week, and usually it's every Saturday after practice and qualifying. We update what's going on. Uh, we take a look at the speeds. Uh, we edit in the show that we do here today on Prime Sports Network. Uh, so uh, check that out every Saturday here or there on Mystery Caution. So CJ Redoon from RotoWire joining me, of course, as always. And we have F1 this week, CJ. It's exciting times. First of the North American rounds heading to Miami this weekend. Looking forward to it. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, F1 later on in the program. Uh, let's just wrap up uh, what we what we saw at Dover uh, on Sunday. Uh, what did you think overall about the race? Uh, relatively interesting, though felt it was predictable. I felt like Denny Hamlin um, would be the one to go uh, all the way to the checkered flag. It was interesting to see Kyle Larson chasing him down at the end. I'm kind of disappointed again that the aerodynamic dependencies of this new generation of car seem to dictate the race. And unfortunately, it was just difficult to pass. Um, you know, the tire fall off um, that particular track. Uh, 1.5 mile ovals are, are similar as well. If you're able to put your car in the way, to disrupt the car behind then there's very little chance that they can pass and that's ultimately how the race ended on sunday yeah we, we uh talked about how strong denny would uh, more than likely be and uh say what you want but even though qualifying um at dover wasn't that big of a deal uh over the past four races there uh, and even with the new car the fact is is that when we talked about it last week um we didn't expect Denny to have a big advantage between qualifying and practice because Larson showed nothing. True Rex was just a little bit better. You know, Bell nearly wrecked. So a lot of the top contenders that we talked about last week just didn't look good at all heading into the race on Sunday. And even though True Rex was a lot better, Larson, as you said, came on strong late. You know, Denny was the most consistent driver, and he's really been, even though he's not first in points. He's been, I mean, to me, if, if we were going to a race this week and I had, I don't know where it was, and I just had to just, hey, I have no idea where the race is, who you win in a win this week, I'd have to pick Denny Hamlin. Yeah, I would not disagree with that one bit. He's been consistently quick. Um, he's been capable of getting into victory lane, obviously tied William Byron for uh, wins on the season with that. And I mean, it, Sunday was all about track position. And uh, fact of the matter is, Denny Hamlin's team was the best on pit road. Sunday afternoon. Denny Hamlin didn't make any mistakes as a driver. He was able to position his car to keep those behind him behind him the entire time. And he didn't have the, the tire fall off, um, you know, because we know he's good at managing his tires. At his tires. That's exactly what he did at Bristol. Uh, probably a little bit of an easier time at it uh, here at Dover. The tire wear wasn't quite as extreme, uh, but nonetheless, that's exactly what ruled the day. It was a, a mistake-free day for him and uh, rightfully came out uh, in front. Okay, so now we head over to Kansas. So we go back to a 1.5 mile track. And uh, some of the uh, interesting uh, stats and recent trends at Kansas to look at. Of course, if you want to talk about other 1.5 mile tracks, you've got Charlotte and Texas on one side. But you also have Las Vegas on the other, and that is uh, the track we really want to look at. That's the one that is the most similar to Kansas. And uh, so, and they had Texas race earlier this year as well. So we'll look at both races, but Las Vegas is the one that is the most similar. You can gamble at this track on two tire stops, so that could make things interesting. And thank goodness, because normally this is a, a, a position track. You, should, you have to qualify well. Usually if you qualify well, you know, you, you got to cut. The pit stops are going to be very important. Uh, for positioning and like I said gambling on on two tires might also come into play big time um, the last eight winners started in the top 10 so there's uh, proof right there of what we're talking about including the last four with the new car starting fifth eighth sixth and fifth uh, once again seven different race drivers uh, have won here at Kansas so that's good if you want to go down that road 
And the most important one, though, is out of those last four races with the new car, uh, the winners have all been Toyota. Matter of fact, seven of the last nine winners of Kansas season with the older car have been Toyota. So, yes, we're definitely going to side with Toyota this week, and we talked about that last week. But just like what happened last week, You'll have to tune in on Saturday on Mystery Caution because, hey, if the qualifying times and the practice times change like they did this past week, maybe we'll have a different opinion. But at this point on Tuesday, it's got to be all about Toyota. Yeah, four out of four, five out of the last six, seven out of the last nine. Like you said, uh, Toyota is absolutely dominated at this track. I'm actually really interested to see how this weekend plays out because uh, looking at the track history, both um, Larson and Hamlin have been pretty fast here as well. So is Larson actually going to be able to take that one step farther? I see him up at the top there on the favorites, probably by his domination also of Las Vegas earlier this season. So that bodes well for him. Uh, but I, I completely agree. I think Hamlin, um, Reddick, uh, maybe Truex, those Toyotas based on their success here, specifically at this track in Kansas, uh, is going to be one one to watch okay so uh let's uh take a look now at the top drivers based on odds as we saw there kyle larson again uh is the favorite uh and again though i gotta say it should be denny hamlin i don't understand why kyle larson is the favorite this week i kind of do because we mentioned that last week it's just larson's just the guy now it's just I don't know. I mean, I understand it in a way, but somehow I kind of don't. I don't. I. I'm starting to wonder about this infatuation with Kyle Larson. I mean, it's not like he wins like 15 races a year or something like the old days where you can have someone like Kyle Busch win a ton of races. Oh, he's the man. Yeah, Kyle Larson wins races, but it's like he doesn't win that many races for him to constantly be at these low numbers every week. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to to see him there. I would have thought. I don't know, maybe going back to back is maybe giving him the slight edge. It's it's not like he's far apart from Denny Hamlin. Both of them have been very successful um, at this track and, and both were quick at Las Vegas too. Um, Hamlin though, as we know, we've talked about this in seasons past. He's one of those drivers that gets on a streak and he can win three races in a row. Whereas with other drivers, it's very difficult and challenging to win week, week to week um back to back or whatever um so yeah interesting i don't disagree i i think uh hamlin should be the favorite if not at least perfectly um despite larson just getting yeah it's not like because we are talking just about uh a very minute deal of uh numbers so it's not something that we could take advantage of um but anyway it is what it is larson does have a win here but it's only one out of 18 uh, so, uh, and when he won, by the way, he won in, uh, 2021 from the pole. So, uh, it'll be, that, that's, that, I think that would be important to keep an eye on, uh, how he practices and qualifies on Saturday in his last four races with the new car. He has looked really strong. He's got two runner up finishes uh, all in the top 10 and he's led a combined 213 laps. And maybe most important, he had a very strong win in Las Vegas leading 181 laps. He has led 29 or more laps in six of the last seven races at Kansas. Yeah, first, second, eighth, second, and fourth. And then you compare that with Denny Hamlin's stats, specifically at this track. He had back-to-back -back wins here the fall of 2019, the spring of 2020. Then look at the last three races at Kansas for Denny Hamlin, second, first, and second. So uh, it doesn't matter where Denny Hamlin starts either for those finishes. So to start 25th, 8th, and 14th to come up with those. Uh, your winner does typically come inside from inside the top 10 here at this track, and Larson has a better starting average certainly over the last four races without question at Kansas. So led 85 and 99 laps Larson did over the last two here at Kansas, Ham Hamlin 34 and 63. Hamlin has the better finishing average, Larson has the better starting average. They both lead about the same amount of laps, which is a lot. Um, hard to choose between these two. Um, I do think Hamlin, as we said earlier, should get the edge versus versus Larson though. 
Yeah, and, and maybe if you take a look and you see Denny Hamlin before the win last week, 37th, 30th, well, keep in mind, one's Talladega. The other was when he was leading the race until he spun out with a couple laps to go. So, uh, what was he, second? Battling with Chase Elliott for the lead. So, that, that really uh, very misleading. So, yes, four wins, seven top fives in the last nine appearances at Kansas with two runner-ups and two wins. He was also eighth at Vegas, so that was a pretty good run. And, uh, yeah, even though he had a bad uh, uh, result at Texas, he nearly won. And, and maybe most important, when, when you're, when, and I think this is, if, if Larson's in a Toyota, I'm picking Larson. But when you got two drivers that are this close to each other, one manufacturer is dominating the track and the other one isn't, well, why wouldn't I take Hamlin? So, okay. Next up, uh, let's go with Reddick. Now, said the same thing last week. Like Reddick at this track. Think he's a good, a good, uh, uh, you know, a, a good contender this week. But do you have to make these odds so low with Reddick? Six to one. I mean, it's just it's, you're not getting a break here. Um, he has a win. He's defending champ. Actually, he won the second race, right? I believe right. last year. Right. Yeah, yep. he won the most recent race. So he's not defending champ, but he won last year. And here's the thing, though: when he won, he led two laps. And when he finished ninth in this race last year, he led 23 laps. So it's not like he's like dominating this racetrack in laps, but he's a good contender. Second at Vegas, fourth at Texas. Again, a win last year. And in his three Xfinity Series races, he's got two on ups. So, yeah, I like him this this week, but do you have to make him six to one? It's definitely a steep price for somebody like Reddick, who in, you know, in comparison to Larson and Hamlin, the two that we just talked about, doesn't have nearly the consistency so far in 2024. I do see 23XI taking huge steps forward. You know, his win at Talladega was a good one for him. He led 13 laps there. He led 37 laps at Texas, um, 68 laps at, at Phoenix. But he's been kind of up and down. He had the 30th place finish at at Bristol, same uh, for Atlanta, and had a couple, um, well, I guess last week he was 11th, so a couple outside the top 10 finishes as well. So I'd like to see a little bit more consistency out of Reddick. I agree that price is way too steep for me to be taking him, uh, certainly as one of the favorites this week. I wouldn't put him up there. And what's interesting is that he won Talladega, and I got it, and it's like, he did? Oh, yeah, he did. It's like he didn't even realize that he won Talladega. It's like because he didn't do do anything until the very last lap. It's been very under the radar. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, that's his his style. I, I'm trying to think of a, a win that he's had in his career where he just went out and dominated. I, I'm not sure that he has. Uh, there might be one or, or something like that. But it, just from his his style is not one that comes out and dominates. He's not one that you turn around and, you know, where has he been? And all of a sudden he's at the front either, though. He's generally generally consistently inside the top 10 and he gets his chances at winning and he takes them. Uh, so that's how he ends up leading just a handful of laps and ends up clicking off a win. Uh, again, just very, you know, at six to one, really tough to take in this week. Yeah, I'd probably be um, more inclined definitely to wait until Sunday and hope that, Maybe he qualifies eighth and practices top 15 or something. And maybe your odds go back up to a more reasonable eight to one, nine to one, 10 to one. Not sure if it would, but that's the chance I would take because he is on a, it's driving a Toyota. So I get it, but too steep a price for me to win two races in three weeks too. So um, Byron and Truex are next at seven to one. And uh, Byron, um, this would not be the week to take him. Matter of fact, seven to one is just about being William Byron and having a bunch of wins this season. That's that's all it is. Uh, he has uh, raced here with the new car, of course, four times. He's at one top five. He's led a combined 44 laps with the new car. He's got two top fives out of 12 career. I see no reason to take him and expect that he's going to win this week again, especially in a Chevy. Truex, on the other hand, to take a look at him, now that's a different story because he's overdue for a win. You're getting the same 7-1, so I think there's no decision there. Ten top tens in his last 14 at Kansas. Six of those top fives. Two of those are wins when he swept 2017, but it was a while ago, 2017. Plus, his two uh, races on the 1.5-mile tracks we talked about, eh, nothing special. Seventh Las Vegas, 14th at Texas. Crashed in this race the last time they were here. Just one top five with the new car. 
So, again, while I like Truex, I liked him a lot more last week than I did this week. But he's good enough here that you just get the feeling that sooner or later they're going to put it together. So that's why I still think he's very dangerous at 7-1. to one. I would take uh, Truex over Byron and, and Reddick personally this week. Uh, again, Toyota. Um, he led 24 and 79 laps in the two races here at this track prior to crashing out last year. And last year, he crashed out really early. It was like the first or second lap, if I'm not mistaken. And he qualified inside the top five then as well. So Truex is consistently fast on 1.5 mile ovals, has been very quick at this track consistently. It's about hanging around inside the top 10 and taking advantage of the opportunities when you get them, just as I talked about with Reddick. He was strong last week. He's been strong a number of weeks so far this season. Uh, I agree with you completely. I think I would take Truex here uh, just from the simple fact, like you said, it's going to come together sooner or later, the way this team has been performing. Why not this week at Kansas where he's got a pretty decent record? Bell is 8-1. to one. Uh, Chase is 9-1. to one. And uh, it's kind of funny. All of a sudden you look up at Chase Elliott's third in the standings. Uh, he had, did nothing last year. Got up to a slow start this year. It just shows you how quick it happens. But um, Bell, you, you, know, you do have to be a little bit concerned about how things uh, transpired last week, but that was last week. You take a look at him this uh, this week, and sort of like what we said with Trex, though, is that I liked him better last week, and he didn't have the performance you were looking for. He's 8-1, to one, so that's okay. But he only has two top fives out of eight results, so that's nothing great. Both of them with the new car. That includes two poles in, in those last four races, so that's, that's impressive, and that's what you have to do to set yourself up for victory here. He does have a win in the Xfinity Series here, but he did not perform very well at Las Vegas and Texas, so that's another warning sign so yeah i don't know I, I definitely lean more towards truex in this spot but you know let's see how bell uh, qualifies in practice the only problem is if he does that well his odds will drop and i definitely won't, won't like him if he does yeah and i'm staying away from bell this week purposefully just because of his recent trajectory i, I know it's talladega is one of them that's in there but 34th 38th and 35th in three of his last four races, the four most recent. The only other one was uh, Texas where he finished 17th. So getting taken out last week, I think is another blow. Um, you know, three out of four being similar situations just puts that team in a really rough spot. Definitely going with Truex uh, over, over Bell in that spot. I would even go with uh, Chase Elliott in this spot as well just because uh, I want to see Bell turn that momentum around. And like you said, if, if he qualifies well, then his odds are going to gonna drop. So you're not going to take him at that point anyway. Yeah, Elliot has been on a nice run. Uh, I'd agree with that. You get an extra point uh, for that matter. Uh, he uh, does have a couple of top tens with the new car, but no top fives. He won Texas, so I think that does count. And he's definitely on the move in a positive way. So, yeah, I, I actually definitely like Elliot also over Byron. And, and I like him over Reddick at these odds. I just much, I'd much rather take Elliott. I'm getting an extra couple of points with Elliott. So. Yeah, I would agree. And he's led laps uh, in both of the, the races here last year, 5 and 47, respectively, spring and fall. Uh, I started 21st in the spring race and finished 7th, still grabbed a top 10 and led 5 laps and started inside the top 10. The second one led 47. So I think that speaks volumes about what he's capable of doing. And we've seen him really get off on the right foot here over the past couple of weeks, turn things around after the slow start to the season, like you said. Uh, and I think it was, you know, the con you could see the confidence building up until he finally snapped his winless streak. We all know the, the troubles that he had last season. I think he's back on it and still has a little bit of runway to go on an upward trajectory. All right, two more Toyotas, Gibbs and Wallace at 15 to one. Uh, Gibbs did not show much at Vegas or Texas, fifth at Vegas, 13th at Texas. Uh, his cup finishes here, not good. Matter of fact, he's crashed twice out of three attempts and has not led a lap. He does have a win in two Xfinity Series races, so we know he can drive here. Uh, but now, of course, he does have a different car. It's a different series, and it hasn't gone all that well. So because of that, I don't think that I, I, there's no way I would touch him yet. I, and I don't see his odds dropping tremendously unless he hits the pole or something like that. So if he's a, if he's in the top 10 in practice of qualifying, I don't lose much on the odds. I'll think about it on Saturday. As far as Bubba, uh, you know, these odds are a little bit low, but Bubba's got a win here. And he doesn't have a lot of wins. And so you have to take notice of that. 
and he's got three top tens out of four with the new car, uh, two top fives plus the win, uh, but uh, not very good here so far in Vegas or Texas. Uh, the results not very good. Um, I give him a benefit of the doubt because he's got a win here and the odds aren't that bad, but I'd probably feel the same way. Let's see what he does in practice and qualifying and then I'll think about it then. I wonder how much his odds will move to being a former winner and the fact that he has two top fives on the last three, three top tens on the last four Kansas starts. So it's not like he's been a slouch here. Just, no. you know, his his previous history here until then just was terrible. Um, but he's got things together. I wonder how much 23XI uh, can lean on Joe Gibbs to improve what they've done on the 1.5 mile oval so far this season. Um, so it'll be interesting. I agree. Kind of watch him through practice, see if they figured something out. Um, he generally starts inside, you know, the top 15 uh, here at Kansas. So I, again, like you, I don't think his uh, odds are going to change drastically. The only thing that I would be a little bit concerned of if, if he shows significant speed, uh, if people pick up on the fact that he has a, a bunch of top tens here over the last handful of races, that would be my only concern. Uh, but it still wouldn't be enough to drive me to choose him early though saturday you know probably end up choosing him over gibbs i would say and keep in mind too uh he gets off to the really good start but that's daytona and atlanta and he's only had one top five since then so um sort of like gibbs gets off to a good start it's kind of cooled off okay now we get to now we get to some some potential bargains here blaney's at 22 to 1 chastain and kyle are at 22 to 1 so um, we can start with Blaney um, because it's not like he has a great history here, but it's okay. He's at top tens. He's got three top fives. He was third at Vegas. He led some laps at Texas, even though he didn't finish well, but a bunch of cars crashed out at Texas. Um, in the last four races with the new car, three of them are in the top 12. In his last two in the Xfinity Series, he finished third at both races. The big deal is is you're getting 22 to 1 we're not getting 13 we're not getting 15 i know he's driving a ford but when we're starting to take a look at guys if we think there's somebody that might be able to steal a win with odds back here i don't think that's likely but if we're going to go that direction blindy's not a bad choice i think he's an excellent choice at, at this this price um and, and the reason you're getting it is because it's a 1.5 mile oval that Toyota dominates. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, the, the odds makers are smart here. Um, like you said, though, he's two top tens of the last t four races heading into this weekend, consistently in the top 12 or on the top 10 here at Kansas. Uh, I think he's been sniffing around. I think the team certainly has a step uh, or two of improvement needed that they will find throughout the summer as the season goes on. Uh, they haven't really quite shown the same type of uh, attack that Joey Logano has had. Uh, but I think um, Blaney has been a little bit more consistent as well, which is why he's further up in the points. So if, if you are going to want to take a swing at somebody, you know, Blaney is uh, a pretty good selection. I might might lean a little bit more heavily toward Ross Chastain uh, on that, though. Um, so definitely close between the two. Um, no no reason not to choose Blaney. Um, but uh, for me, probably just knowing, you know, Chastain and, and his record probably me just lean a little bit more his direction. Yeah, Chastain is another good one because he has three top tens and four with the new car and all in the top 15 with an average of eighth. So that's pretty good for someone you're getting 22 to 1. That means, I mean, 8th tells you that he's just a little, he's off just a little bit. And maybe this is the year that he goes from 8th to even uh, better than that. Um, and in the Xfinity series, he has an average of 12.6 in 8 races, which is really good for Ross. Because in the beginning of his career in the Xfinity series, he was not very good. It was usually, how did he do in the last two races? How did he do in the last year in the Xfinity series? But... This has been a good track for Ross over his career, even though he doesn't have a win to show for it. And he was fourth at Vegas and led 33 laps at Texas before, like many other drivers, had issues and finished in the 30s. So, yeah, I agree. I, I would put a little bit of long shot money on Chastain and Blaney. While, of course, I just got to avoid Kyle at this moment until we see anything at all. Because, yeah, he's got the history, but is, does that matter? A couple of wins. Um, 
it doesn't show much. Vegas and Texas this year. Ninth at, Ve at Texas was his best finish. He does have a third place finish out of four in the new car and another top 10. Um, but overall, yeah, you got to wait on Kyle Busch now. And then look, it's okay. It's early. How many times have we said this over the years? You're not winning championships anymore in this series at this time of the season. It's about getting hot late in the season. Yeah, you're exactly correct. And just to give a little bit more on, on what I was saying about Ross Chastain, what the difference between him and Blaney for me here at this track is that Chastain consistently qualifies well. He, he's qualified 11th or better in his last four. These are all with the new car. And he's finished 13th or better in each of those last four as well. So he's very consistent, just needs, like you said earlier, that little bit of step or that little bit of edge to, to be able to pull things together here at this specific track. And I'm surprised a fourth place finish last week at Dover is not enough for you with. Uh, with <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on the pole and he like he did the previous year. Drop and back. he did the same thing. <laughs> he led early laps, disappeared. Yep. I, I do though. I, I do give him credit for finishing fourth. And, um, and, and, and that does couple with the pole. Um, but yeah, it's still, there's just something about it. I guess the good thing is he's 22 to one. So mm -hmm. what I want to see though, is I want to see, uh, how does he do in practice of qualifying again? Because yeah, I could take a stab at him now at 22 to one, but I know at this track, if he doesn't qualify well, I just threw my money away. So I think I'd rather take the chance and say, all right, well, let's see what he does. Let's see if he qualifies and practices well, because I'll still get a decent number since he's 22 to 1 right now. Yeah, I don't disagree, but even then I still might hesitate taking him. If you look at the last four, two of the finishes, 26th and 35th, one of them being a crash. So uh, that's been his challenge this season is the consistency, right? Yeah. And, and he has had so many mistakes and so many problems. It's great to see some uh, glimmer of hope last week with the pole and the fourth, a top five. Uh, you know he's a great driver. You know the team's got the equipment, but things just aren't clicking right now, and that consistency isn't there. So for me, even if he did qual practice and qualify really fast, I worry about the um, you know leading early laps and then slipping back. With the stage racing the way that it is, just like the season, you want to get hot at the end. For a race win, you want to get hot at the end. And Bush so far this season hasn't shown that he's been getting hot at the end. He's been starting starting hot and then fading. And that's that's my concern there. And this is a t any anytime you get to a track where qualifying is so important, mm -hmm. man, it's it's risky to wager before practice and qualifying because you mm -hmm. feel like your money's on the line before the race starts and that's not usually the case i'd say it matters what did you say like maybe 15 percent of the time 20 percent tops over all the over the entire season where qualify matters that much well this track certainly um trying to think of how many 1.5 mile ovals are left on the calendar because the, Four, i, mean, I think this, this particular kind of 1.5 mile oval uh, I feel like even at, you know, Texas and, and Charlotte and, and certainly Atlanta with the new rules, since it races more like a super speedway now, I feel like even those have a little bit wider of uh, room to race. Uh, and it's not just one line. I feel like this is going to be a, more like what we saw last week at Dover than we would have seen at, at pl someplace other than Las Vegas. And if you look back at Las Vegas, you know, it, it was dominated um, by a single car. There, there wasn't, um, it wasn't an overly competitive race. There wasn't a ton of passing. It was one car that went out there and dominated. So like you said, I, you, you do have to specifically on 1.5 mile ovals, but this type specifically, uh, you do have to wait through qualifying. Otherwise, you know, if you're driver, <laughs> if you're driver for whatever reason, if you choose Hamlin and he qualifies 25th, you're screwed, <laughs> right? Sure. Even if it's Hamlin. Yeah. That's so really you're better off this in this situation is you're better off um, using your money if you like to wager early in the week using it on some of these long shots only and then just hey if you lose a point or two with your time because Denny Hamlin colors they're not gonna be two to one right so what are you gonna lose Hamlin goes from four to one to three to one well I think it's worth the wait so all right now as far as the rest of the long shots uh, let's see here uh, Bowman. 
You know, he's not bad at 25 to 1 because in his last three starts with the new car, I believe they were all with the new car, all in the top 10. He led 107 laps, finishing fourth uh, during that stretch. Um, I think that was a couple of years ago. Average 7.6. So that's strong. Didn't look fast. Didn't look good, though, at Vegas or Texas. That's a problem. But I am getting 25 to 1. Um, so he kind of stands out. Look at Kislowski and Busher at 45 and 55 to 1. Holy moly. Um, and they were very disappointing last week. We were really looking at them as interesting long shots, and they got nothing uh, from Saturday to Sunday. And Busher, you look at his career here, forget it. You look at Kislowski's career here, good before. Not so good after Penske. So you can see why there's such long shots. Joey Logano might be interesting because in his last two uh, races, fifth and sixth, and he's 35 to 1. Maybe Bowman and, Lo- and, and, and Logano might be the two, uh, you know, really. I mean, B- Bowman has still got the similar numbers to the other drivers we just talked about. But yeah, Logano at 35 to 1. That's pretty high. Logano at 35 to 1 is, is a great shot at almost any race this year because it seems like the majority of them he's been in contention for the win and i think he had a stage win in this race uh last season as well he ended up leading eight laps finishing sixth he finished fifth in the fall uh so i do think logano's got the speed uh great odds there on him so uh if you are going to take your early bets prior to qualifying logano certainly is one to go for and i would consider bowman as well um if not because of what he's done at kansas but more specifically what he's done recently so eighth fifth and eighth uh, in three of the last four races uh the other one was the 37th place finish in texas that uh, was a crash <clears throat> So uh, I think Bowman has the right stuff going for him. He can sneak a win, as we've talked about every single time we talk about Bowman. He can just he's he's one of those guys that can pop up on the last lap and and be the first one across the finish line. Uh, So either of these guys I would absolutely consider taking. But I think Logano actually ends up being a must take at those and, and Bowman, who has not had a, a career being a consistent driver, has been pretty consistent so far this season. Mm-hmm. And he's in the top 10. By the way, as much as we just kind of trash Kyle Busch, he's only like 11th <laughs> in the point standings. Yeah. So that's why yeah. we, we say, you know, maybe like, for instance, I haven't looked at it yet. But if I pop on over and check out what his futures are right now, they've got to be pretty good. Uh, and this is where you want to try to take advantage. So there you go. You got Kyle Bush sitting at 20 to 1 to win the championship. And even Logano's uh, still at a good price at 16 to 1. Uh, Bowman is off to a great start at 35 to 1. So, yeah, I mean, there's still some really good futures numbers out there. And Kyle Bush sticks out. I mean, he could turn like that. And we still have months to go before the playoffs. Yeah, I, I fully expect um, Bush not only to win a race this season, but to get hot as the, the year goes on. Richard Childress Racing doesn't go into slumps for long. Um, they've definitely turned their organization around. Um, Bush has been doing good things with it, making it even better. Uh, sits 13th in the standings, as, as you mentioned. Um, not 11th, but 13th. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, have, I had Logano at 13th and Bush at 11th. Uh Logano. Unless that's a different, you know, the, uh, because, you know, the standings are what? There's two different types of standings that they have? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm looking at the ones ranked by wins. So okay. there are people, yeah, Christopher Bell's, at, he, he would be ahead of Christopher Bell. He would be ahead of Daniel Suarez. Yeah. Uh, so Bush would be 11th. There you go. Um, but uh, so, so I've got Denny Hamlin, William Byron at the top with three wins and then all the other wins. Uh, I got it. Yeah. You got the other right. one. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, Bush still solidly, regardless of whether it's 11th or 13th, solidly in the playoff standings for as rough as a season as he's had so far and for as many big mistakes as Richard Childress Racing has had as an organization this season. I uh, fully expect them to get hot as this summer goes on. Certainly in the playoffs, he is one that is able to find his way through. It's just those last couple of rounds that he has trouble with. And uh, by the way, Chase Briscoe continues to have a nice start to the season. He's 80-1. to 1. He's never done anything here so in the Cup Series, so I'm not t- telling you to take him. But he does have a win when he dominated here in his last Xfinity appearance at Kansas in 2020. He led 159 laps, so uh, he does have experience here. Maybe you want to look at him if he qualifies and practices well. 
um, because your odds are still going to be very good uh, when you're starting out at 80 to 1. And I am going to be starting to look at now Noah Gregson and see mm-hmm. if he could keep this up. Uh, he's sixth and third in his last two starts, sixth at Las Vegas, one of those sixth. And he did win an Xfinity Series in his last Xfinity Series appearance in 2022 at Kansas. I'm not saying he's going to win the race, but if he, if he confesses the top 10 again, I think it's maybe time because we thought he was going to have a better year than he had last year. And it always seems to be the case. Whenever you think something's going to happen one year, you got to wait till the next year for it to happen. That was with Blaney winning the championship. Yeah. <laughs> Except that was probably multiple years. Right. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Gregson. I, I expected it at Talladega because that's his style of racing. He always did very well there in Xfinity. And plus that's, uh, you know, those types of tracks are equipment, um, uh, you know, uh, nullifiers. So it makes the, the field much more um competitive throughout and if you've got a disadvantage based on the car that you're driving it doesn't show up as much there so third place there uh, to come to a place at dover where the 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 team the car the driver really make a difference come out and finish sixth on a track position day uh you know he's qualified extremely well in, as in fifth there uh, which is why that led to such a great finish if he can continue qualifying well i don't see any reason why he can't continue to score top tens at this point so uh, i think noah gregson if you're willing to take a, a risk certainly he's he's risky no, no question uh, but if you're willing to take it i think he's one um that certainly if he qualifies should be inside the top 10 as far as the finish goes and uh, we might as well have a shout out for the first time uh this year for uh, daniel hemrick um, yeah. Now he's 500 to one. He's not winning the race, but uh, in his last two cup starts, both in the top 10. And he was a uh, runner up on this racetrack twice in seven Xfinity series races. So uh, we'll see whether or not uh, he can keep up his momentum as well. Uh, oh, you know, Austin Dillon, if he doesn't pick things up, I wonder whether or not his, uh, his career is in jeopardy. He's the... He is the poster child for the things that are going wrong at Richard Childress. I think Kyle Busch has the experience and the aptitude to be able to overcome those types of things. Dylan hasn't shown it, and he's not been able to pull the team up by the bootstraps like Bush has. Uh, so, you know, once once Dylan starts turning around, uh, I think that's when you're going to see Kyle Busch really be at his best for the season, because that'll tell you that the organization as a whole is starting to figure things out and get over their problems. Uh, but I agree with you. I think at this point, um, even as early as it is, I, I feel like Dylan is so far behind that he's in a must win situation if he wants to even have a chance at the playoffs. All right. So uh, let's just give our picks. And I'll just say that what I would do or what I'm going to look, how I'm going to Truex, I think we said this last week. Uh, these these would be my top two picks this week. And then I, I would just take a look at some of these long shots. Again, Blaney, Chastain. You want to throw Kyle Busch in there? I'm all right with Bowman, Logano. Uh, a bunch, put them all into like one little group and say, okay, if there is some sort of a, you know, maybe one of these guys, I have a good person. If I do all five of them, I just need one of them to have a good week, on a good uh, day on Saturday to put me in position to win on Sunday. So that's probably what I would do at this point. What, what, what do you like? Uh, I think I'm going to differ with you just slightly um, because I just want to split the the Toyota camp. I, I would go Hamlin, Truex as my top choices, but I do think Larson, if there's anybody that can take it to Toyota, it's going to be Larson. So I'm going to take Hamlin and Larson as my two top ones. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think Truex will be up there and I would not be surprised if he ends up winning just here on Wednesday. I, I just want to split my luck between <laughs> between manufacturers. Um, certainly from a long shot perspective, I, I said it before, I think Logano is an absolute must take at, at this point. And then from the midpoint, um, you know, I, 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 there are a lot of good choices. Um, I, I don't know. Do we consider Chastain a, a midpoint? Yeah. Or, then I, I, sure. I would take Chastain probably there just because of his consistently consistency at this track consistently qualifying inside the top 10 and finishing inside the top 10 i think he's one uh that will be there again and if things fall his way uh, this track can produce late cautions as well Uh, i I can see chastain elbowing his way through all right so that is what's going on in the cup series let's talk uh let's talk about f1 and miami so uh Besides the obvious, because we don't really, we're, we're not going to get into 
who's going to win the race. So, uh, for <laughs> staff, time there. For staff and is minus six hundred, and wow. So what? We, yeah, this I get really bad. So let's try to find one of those drivers like from a few weeks ago. So let's get let's take a look at top ten. So let's see what we got here. All right, g give us a good one. Top ten. Before you go to the top ten, go back to the winners. I'll give you two for if Verstappen. Like if you're taking the strategy that we talked about at the beginning of the season, where you take somebody other than Verstappen every single week for the one or two times that he doesn't win, this week you're going to want to go with Sergio Perez or Carlos Sainz. Those two drivers have average finishes of third and fourth at this track. Granted, it's only been two races. Max Verstappen has won both of them. Uh, they also have average starting spots of 2.5 for both of them. Both of them have been consistently on the podium so far this season. So I think you're looking at two and three, number two and three finishers right there behind Verstappen. And if anything happens to Verstappen, uh, I would probably put Perez or Sainz uh, up there on the top step of the podium. 11 to one and 18 to one to win. Let's take a look at what the podium finish is. So we have Perez, well, Perez is minus 350. There you go. You're taking Carlos Sainz on your podium there uh, at a plus what, 135. Um, not bad. And, you know, he's been faster than Leclerc. Uh, you know, typically, probably in any other season, you might take Leclerc because he's been historically the, the faster of the two Ferrari drivers. But at this particular track, Sainz has been better. In this particular season, Sainz has also been better. So he's your guy. Okay. Then let's see what we've got here. Top 10. And let's see. We're going to go all the way down here. Okay. So this is where the, because obviously we're not going to do, I mean, why would anybody? Wow, that's tough. Yeah, why would anybody do any of these numbers when I could just go with Verstappen then to win? Yeah, I don't see any bargain in there. Uh, not even Hulkenberg. I mean, Hulkenberg is probably your best bet of the bunch uh, because uh, he's been the better of the Haas drivers so far this season. Haas has had a couple of uh, pretty decent finishes. They've shown a lot of speed. It's about them being able to be mistake free and make it all the way through to the finish. Uh, so certainly of that bunch, uh, the plus 175 would go with Nico Hulkenberg. But for the roughly the same odds, you could go with Carlos Sainz as a podium, or you can swing for the fences and take Sainz and potentially even um, Perez for the win and, and come out ahead uh, more than you would going with Hulkenberg on the top 10. I don't see any deals there. All right. Winner without. So this is winner without Red Bull, McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Aston Martin. So that takes all of your major drivers out. So again, you'd probably want to be looking at somebody like a Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo might come to mind, except for the fact that he and his team have been absolutely terrible so far this season. Alex Alban last season probably would have taken him because that Williams was pretty fast and they just haven't really fi figured it out yet this season. So, you know, probably Hulkenberg, um, maybe a Magnuson, but certainly uh, if you're not going to go with Hulkenberg there, maybe a Valtteri Bottas or Bottas uh, would be your your choice there. But top choice again, Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah, and uh, again, just taking a quick look here at the top tens. Um, and what else? Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. What's, what's Sprint winning car? Uh, that would be on the sprint race. So which team is going to win the is this this manufacturer? Sprint? Yep. Manufacturer. So again, you know, very similar to the, to the race, you're going to take a, a Verstappen or a Perez when you're looking at, uh, at that one. Okay. And overall, uh, do we have anything else? Like what's the news this week in F1? Big news this week in Formula One may be a foreboding sign for Max Verstappen's future with Red Bull Racing. So oh. Adrian Newey, uh, the chief designer at Red Bull, I think he's been with the team well over 10 years at this point. He is the best car designer in the sport. Um, he is actually leaving the team. I think they just announced it today. We don't know exactly where he's going. Um, if he stays in Formula One, the, the money would be on him going to Ferrari. Um, but he's going to be at select races this season for the remainder of the season to give uh, advice and feedback on the car. But he's not, long story short, I mean, he's not going to 
be doing too much to build Red Bulls and, and design Red Bulls car uh, for next season and, and the future rules changes that are coming about. So I wonder if Max Verstappen, uh, you know, with the Christian Horner saga that we've talked about, uh, as well as the the genius brain behind the, the Red Bull car itself that has made it such a dominant uh, dominant force, I wonder if that is signaling Max Verstappen's potential exit. Uh, rumor suggests he could potentially wind up at Audi when Audi takes over Sauber. Um, so that would be interesting. Audi coming in as a manufacturer might be able to step up the game there. That might be a seat that Verstappen might want to go to if for whatever reason he doesn't want to stick with Red Bull with them losing. You know, if, if Horner sticks around, if you if you pay attention to the tabloids and Nui leaves, I think the writing's on the wall that Verstappen would want to leave. Uh, Audi is probably the best place where he could wind up at this point because I doubt he's going to go over uh, anywhere else to, to partner anybody, to be honest with you. So, you know, watch this space. Adrian Newey is a big loss to Red Bull. It won't really affect them this season. It'll start to show its signs of him leaving in, in the next seasons as those new cars don't have him as involved. Uh, but I think that's a signal certainly for Max Verstappen's potential future. And he is the one that is holding up this driver market so i think at some point in the summer when verstappen signals where he's going to go that's going to start the dominoes falling and if you remember from last season to this season we've had absolutely zero driver changes and team changes uh, so I, I think we may be in store for quite a bit next season i, I mean it just seems to me that they're so dominant they're they're just they're winning ninety percent of the races, ninety five percent of the races. Why would you? Why wouldn't you keep? Is this just this guy is just bored and wants to go somewhere else, or is it? No, I mean nobody's playing hardball, are they? I mean, what's again? Is it just well, I I need a new change. I mean, we're too dominant here. I mean, what else am I going to do? Let me go somewhere else and pick up their organization, and they give me a challenge. Is that all that is? much with Adrian Newey. Yeah, he's spent a long time uh, designing the uh, Mercedes or the, the McLaren cars before when, when they had their dominance. Uh, he's been around the sport for a long time. He's been with several different teams and pretty much every single one that he's been with, he designed what ultimately ended up being the, the series' dominant car. And he did it again here at Red Bull. In fact, I was very surprised when he did, last time he left, um, you know, Formula One, I was very surprised that he came back because he wanted to do a completely new challenge. He was talking about the America's Cup yachts. He was talking about um, developing, uh, you know, the road cars. He's still going to be working on the Red Bull road car, the the concept car that's going to be at the Goodyear, um, or I'm sorry, Goodwood Festival here in the next couple of months. Uh, so he's got a lot of focus and ties into that. But yeah, with Adrian Newey, he's the kind of guy that wants to go to a new challenge. It wouldn't surprise me if he went and did something completely different, some other kind of racing, like, I don't know, MotoGP or uh, maybe America's Cup or, or something like that. I, he, he, likes, he likes to use his brain. He likes new challenges. Uh, and I think the domination here has been, okay, I, I've, had, I've had my fill. We're here again. Time, time to try something, something new. And the, that wouldn't necessarily mean that Max Verstappen would go to the same place, does it? Uh, no, I don't think so, because okay. I knew he would be going, I, I, odds are would, would he would go to Ferrari, knew he would, okay. uh, if he were to stay in Formula One. And those seats are already filled. you got Leclerc and, and Lewis Hamilton. Okay. So, uh, no, no way Verstappen could even get in there. So I think at that point... Um, you know, depending on who wins the tug of war within the Red Bull camp, whether Christian Horner stays or goes, um, that probably is uh, going to be part of or a determinant of whether he stays. But I think similar for, for Nui, Verstappen's been dominant now for several seasons. Why not go and see if he can do it at another team with a new manufacturer that's coming in with deep pockets and, and really intent on having success as well. So, um it's going to be interesting to play out. I do think uh, with the Christian Horner saga and with Adrian Newey leaving, I'd be hard pressed to see Adrian Newey stay in Formula One, if not take a couple of years out. Uh, so again, I think that just kind of forewarns us that Verstappen's likely going to be looking for greener pastures. Hey, 
I hope I, look good good for him uh, but you know for the sake of the sport I hope he decides to stay away from the sport for a few years because he's too good so um, we don't need him yeah. we don't need him designing <laughs> another car that can't be beat so that's <laughs> good for him but I don't think it's uh, even though I know there are a lot of fans out there that well it's, it's sort of like the soccer fans well it's not about how many goals you score there's a lot more to it and I get it we all get it we totally understand it um but those sports are not very popular in america so <laughs> coincidence no yeah formula one needs some competition um in order to to keep this country's attention they have three races now in north america which is great for them um but man the on-track action has got to be more exciting <laughs> it does I mean, has there yes, even, and I know there's always been runs like this, but yeah. can you can you tell me, uh, before we close out here, can you tell me, like, wh when was the last time that you really th didn't know if there would at least be one of five drivers that could win on any week? Oh, my gosh. Five drivers, if you put it at that. Is that, like, is that never yeah. happened, or <clears throat> am I, like, we have to go back 40 years or something? No, it's it's happened. I, I think probably the year that Jensen Button won the the championship um, with Braun, that was a new team. It was a whole new series of regulations that came out, brand new cars, new concepts. Figures. So everything was basically new that yeah. season. But that, that That's kind of how far back you go. But honestly, there's traditionally outside of maybe the past three seasons, um, there maybe two seasons actually there's always it's it seemed to always come down to two guys at two the guys. end of the season and it's been lewis hamilton and max verstappen it's been michael schumacher and mika hakkinen it's been fernando alonso and pick your driver um but that competitiveness ha has been there almost every season um even in Hamilton's heyday. I mean, he still had Nico Rosberg to contend with, and Nico Rosberg ended up winning one of those championships too. So you never really knew. Uh, but right now, the last two seasons, uh, it was a close battle three years ago between Verstappen and Hamilton to go down to the last race. But once Verstappen took that edge, the last two seasons, it, he's he's just run away with it, absolutely run away with it. Well, two's better than one. That's for sure. I mean, odds wise, I guess it would put you probably each week at like. Probably two fifty for each driver, I guess, something like that, or minus two hundred. But, but I would say this: it'd probably be, I don't know. I'd almost think it would be worse in a way, because even though you're risking more money, you have a much better chance that he's going to win. <laughs> yeah. Whereas the other chance, you're like, well, it could go either way. Right. And now I'm risking, you know, minus two hundred each week. That could go either way. So Absolutely. yeah. I could see it actually being more profitable now, as crazy as it sounds. Okay, anyway, that's going to wrap it up. When's the next F1 race? Uh, next F1 race will be two weeks after Miami. We go back to Imola, uh, May, what is that, 17th or thereabouts. Okay, so uh, so that's just one week off? One week off. One week off, and we're back again on F1. In the meanwhile, what do we have next week? Is that, what do we, what do we have next, next week? Next week for Cup is Darlington. Darlington, okay. And then uh, also race. I believe so. Isn't that crazy? The also yeah. race is here already? Already, yeah. It, How is that even? Today's May 1st. It's unbelievable. Where did April go? And it already feels like summer here to do. <laughs> well, that's because we have like 10 playoff races. So it's not like you have three. It's like, it's, it's like three months of playoffs. So it makes a little more sense that way. All right. Well, look, I'm looking forward to the also race because uh, we haven't seen it there before. And is there any chance if it goes off well that we might return to that track? They raced. They did the All Star race in North Wilkesboro last season. Um, they actually that was the first. Oh, they time did last season. The, yeah, Why first time. I remember it. The, the wet tires on, on an oval. Um, so yeah, I, I think there is a chance. I know they've been putting a lot of investment into the speedway. They did find a distillery underneath the grandstand bleachers, so it'll be interesting to see how they seat people around that area. <laughs> as, as they were doing improvements, they found this hollowed out section underneath the the stands in the front straight where it was a, a moonshine <laughs> distillery. Of course. <laughs> Of course, yeah, North Wilkesboro. By the um, way, was that Larson's <laughs> win last year? Yeah, I believe Larson. Because I right. remember the boring. I know we had a really boring one at Texas, but I also remember Larson. I could have sworn because didn't he win like back to back? Did he win back to back? 
I think he did. Yeah. And now that you mention it, yeah, I, I believe he did. Maybe that's why he's atop of the standings each week. Could be. He's the all-star <laughs> champ. He's Mr. Yeah, I'd love to see. Yeah, the the word is that if North North Wilkesboro continues on the the trajectory that they've been on, continue getting the draw, the investments pay off, that it will eventually get a, a spot back on the permanent schedule or the regular schedule. All righty, that's going to wrap it up. We'll be back next week to talk about Darlington. 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 So. Um, better than uh it should be better than this week but i hope i'm wrong because it's the first trip to kansas so you never know uh we'll th- see how things go we didn't think it'd turn out the way it did last week even though we did expect hamlin to win it uh everything kind of changed with the weather and that was a big deal and i'm sure that had a lot to do with it qualifying and cold conditions on saturday and so forth that's not going to happen very long much longer as the weather changes but we'll be back again next week with more talk here on the NASCAR Cup Series. Don't forget, uh, when you check back with us on Mystery Caution on Saturday, we'll have a link in the description uh, for CJ's report uh, for the races F1 and uh, NASCAR. By the way, the F1 race is when? It'll be Sunday evening, actually. Uh, I want to say it kicks off somewhere around the 5 o'clock hour. Interesting. So it's going to come after the Cup race oh on Sunday. Okay, interesting. So keep an eye on that, and we'll see everybody next week.